Father, it is good for us to be able to uh, take the Sabbath day and to use it a little differently to our other days um, and together uh, and to worship you uh, here in the sanctuary. And so, Father, for the gift of this moment, we give thanks for uh, the gift of being able to uh, offer worship to you, uh, acknowledging that you are the one who deserves all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Father, very mindful of uh, your great gift of revelation, that your very nature is always to share or to disclose uh, your goodness. And so we thank you and we acknowledge uh, you as the great God of revelation, that you have revealed to us uh, who you are, that you reveal to us who we are, that you reveal to us the mysteries of your kingdom, reveal to us that there is a love on offer in this world that is from your world, that there is a grace that is offered from you to each one of us, and we too are able to grow in that grace and to offer it and to freely share it and bring healing in this world through it. Father, that uh, there is a way in your kingdom which is different to the ways of this world. And that is revealed. And we can participate uh, more and more in the ways of your kingdom. And so, Father, for the revelation of who you are and who we are, uh, for your uh, revelation of all your realities, we worship and we give you praise. Father, we present ourselves in this time for ministry, uh, knowing that uh, who we are uh, is a mixed bag. And so we celebrate some of the goodness that we know and the goodness that is ours. Uh, but we bring to you those parts of our living, uh, which still, for all sorts of reasons, uh, battle to find their place uh, under you. And so for the ignorance, uh, for our own defiant willfulness, uh, for our lack of enthusiasm. We ask that you will continue to work in our hearts to give us that which wakes us up uh, to the glory and to the goodness of your kingdom so that we may choose to live no other place. Father, for your revelation that comes to us through scripture we are forever reliant and so we thank you that we have this opportunity today uh, to reflect on scripture and for you to minister to us as we reflect and so we ask for your blessing over each one of us uh, as we enter into this time of worship and so may your spirit uh, do what it needs to do with each one of us uh, in the silences in the songs, in the prayers, uh, in the proclamation of your word. We ask for your blessing and for your presence to be known to each one of us. Amen. Amen. A very, very warm welcome to each one of you to the service this morning. And uh, I have it on good authority that God's holding back the bad weather. The good weather's here for Sunday um, so that we can worship. Uh, but uh, tomorrow's going to be another story. Um, but uh, people down on the coast in the Cape um, have had a, a rough night. So I'm sure we'll uh, be able to feel a bit of what they've experienced uh, over this time. Uh, just some flower messages. Um, first of all, to 
uh, Ruby uh, from Cheryl uh, in celebration of my dearest mom, Ruby's 83rd birthday, uh, celebrated yesterday. Uh, so blessed to have you as my mom, as my friend. Uh, may the year ahead be filled with many blessings, with love, with joy, with peace and with good health. Then to Arthur and to Pat, um, from Jenny and Darren, Johnny, Melanie and Wayne, uh, Benita, Dale, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, wishing uh, the two of you all the best for a 59th wedding anniversary uh, coming up this week. <laughs> and so may God bless you richly with love and health and many more memories uh, with us. And so it's just a wonderful gift. Uh, to be able to celebrate 59 years of family life and you think of uh, everything that's happened and every season, um, it's fantastic. And so God bless you. Then from a Dot, um, just a remembering Davy, it's been 10 years to, and still your memory is a treasure and a, comf and a comfort each day where you are always and where you are ever near. And then also from Eunice, uh, Haley, Troy, uh, to Rayleigh, forever in our hearts and always in our thoughts. And so just uh, wonderful to be able to uh, gain a sense of uh, what's special and what the gifts are in people's lives and what they're grateful for. And so thank you for those flower messages and uh, congratulations uh, to those uh, who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And... Uh, Thank you for sharing uh, the gift of a memory of a loved one uh, with us. And so last week, uh, Taryn finished off the uh, sermon series, Come Holy Spirit, Come. And so we begin a new sermon series today. And over the next five Sundays, we will be uh, looking at a psalm. Uh, that focuses on a particular life reality. And so uh, we just thought we'd dip into one of the books of the Bible for a while, do a bit of a Bible study. Um, and so I've chosen uh, five psalms from the first 11. Um, and today we focus on uh, Psalm 1 for a life lesson on wisdom. But just in terms of uh, the psalms, um, Eugene Peterson writes that the Psalms are one of the greatest tools that are given to people. It's a tool uh, given to you and to me as we venture into the depths of being, as we journey the vast uncharted world of becoming. Uh, these 150 uh, chapters are the best tools that are available for working the faith. They are 150 carefully crafted prayers that deal with all the ways that God is active in us and through us and for us in all the parts of our lives that are. And so they are action-packed within the Psalms. Uh, we will come across uh, the ways in which God is active in us and through us the way that God acts for us uh, in every part of who we are. And so I trust that the next five weeks will be a blessing um, and that um, our lives will be enriched uh, by God as we spend time focusing on other psalms. Today it's time for Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. Blessed is the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in season, whose leaf doesn't wither, whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff. With the wind, uh, it is blown away. And therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, 
nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will follow the path of destruction. The Lord will always bless the hearing of his word. Thanks be to God. Some of you may question why um, I have a reference Psalm 1 as a life teaching on wisdom. Uh, there was no mention of the word wisdom uh, in that psalm. And so I'm hoping that I will be justified in my selection uh, of wisdom being the life lesson that is told to us in the psalm uh, by first taking two other scriptures uh, into consideration. Um, and these two speak about wisdom, and hopefully as they speak, you will start making some connection um, to uh, the wisdom that is offered in Psalm 1. The first place that we're going to go to is to the book of Proverbs, which, like the Psalms, is part of the wisdom literature of the Old Testament. And in various places, um, one of the themes that runs through the Proverbs uh, is um, thoughts concerning the wise and the foolish. And so I want us just to do a quick sort of um, quick survey of what this uh, book of Proverbs tells us about what it means to uh, be wise, or what it means to not be foolish. Interested to pick up that uh, Proverbs speaks of the foolish as those who are hot-headed. Hey? Hot-headed. Who knew? Foolish. The hot-headed are those who use words without regard to any reality outside themselves. And so their words are certainly not rooted in any kind of godly instruction because that's outside of themselves. There's no reference beyond themselves. And so their words will flow from how they are made to feel by the world and by what's happening in the world. And it will be taken personally, and there will be a personal response to what's happening in this world. And that's the hot-headedness of uh, the fool. World beware if you dish out anything that is disagreeable to the fool. Because then, because I'm the only reference what has happened is, an aggrieve, uh, is, is a grievance towards me. And so I give full vent uh, to the rage within. The foolish will be reckless in the words that they choose. Those words will cause harm. Those words, Proverbs tells us, will pierce like swords. Proverbs goes on to say that life amongst fools is a life that is lived amongst snares that threaten life. Is that there are traps all over the place and you don't know when your next step will make you a victim to, your fool, to the fool's next attack. You don't know that uh, this is a trap. Well, this is a snare. Uh, this is dangerous territory. You are about to get into a whole lot of trouble. And then the proverb also tells us uh, that in this environment where the fool is operative, in this hot-headedness, in this uh, reactionary living, uh, in this life-defeating environment, the fool feels strangely secure. Huh? 
I'm okay with the way life is. I wonder if you've ever had the misfortune of living amongst fools. I wonder too if you have ever subjected others uh, to living in a world uh, according to a fool. With each of those reflections on foolish living, uh, the Proverbs speaks about wisdom. And so it speaks about the way, uh, the way of the wise being uh, the opposite to a fool. The wise will keep wise and will get wise by keeping company with the wise. So that's good news if we're not wise. Or when we're not wise, we know what to do. Hang around with those who have a greater wisdom. They will get us wise and keep us wise. The wise shun evil. They are awake and alert and deliberate in making their choices. I will not be drawn into this life-sapping, energy-sapping environment. I will be drawn towards that which brings life. So let me shun evil, says the wise. Let's develop habits of maintaining a healthy respect for an almighty God. Let's not be a fool that has a disregard for anything that God has to say. Unlike the foolish, the wise actively open themselves to listen to God's instruction they accept God's commands and God's commands become the source of their living. That's the way of the wise. And as a result, the wise are people who bring healing, especially through the words that they've chosen and through the words that they have not chosen. The words cause calm and choose calm over chaos. And the wise become a source of life for others. The other passage uh, or the other scripture that I want to uh, draw your attention to is found in the book of James in chapter 3. Uh, it speaks about wisdom and it identifies the wise as those uh, who pursue goodness. So like the Proverbs, those who shun evil, the opposite, those who pursue goodness. Um, those are the wise. And then it goes on to qualify what pursuing a goodness is. It says that pursue goodness that results from living well in humbleness. Hey? So the goodness that is yours and mine as a result of living well in humbleness. And it's a very, very interesting qualification of goodness. And so it goes on to say that the wise will remain humble by not denying the truth of their shadow selves not denying that they're not always what they want to be. Being aware that they are fallible, that they are fallen, that they are in need of salvation, that they haven't got it all together. Those are the wise. The wise are those who, according to the book of James, say that there are times when envy is closer to us than we want envy to be. There are times when we are, where we are bitter. There are times when, out of selfish ambition, 
our view of reality is clouded. The wise are those people who acknowledge that about themselves. They are the people who are pursuing a goodness that results from living well in humbleness. But in acknowledging the, those realities, the wise, unlike the fool, never ever boast and never ever take pride in such things. Wise people realize that giving expression to the lesser self, it is that which births chaos. And it's that which allows evil to be rampant in the world. And so that's why the wise acknowledge it, but don't give expression to it. Deal with the lesser self in ways that are helpful for them and for this world. And so you will find wise people uh, pursuing purity and pursuing peace. You will find wise people being considerate and submissive, being full of mercy, bearing a good fruit, showing impartiality and sincerity is where James finishes off in verse 18. And so again I ask, have you ever been in the company? Have you ever been subjected to the company of the wise? Have you ever lived life in the presence of those who are wise? And have you maybe, have you maybe been identified by somebody else as the wise who have benefited from the environment that you have allowed them to live in? And so it's in the light of these two readings that I want to make direct reference to the life of the uh, It's in the light of these two readings that make reference to the life of the wise that we can now turn to Psalm 1 and just make those connections that make Psalm 1 a life lesson on wisdom. Psalm 1 speaks about not walking in the ways of the wicked. Huh? Do you see the connection? It's wise to not walk in the ways of the wicked. It's wise not to follow the ruts of those who are as blind as bats. It's wise to not stand in the way that sinners take. It's wise to not take up conversation with people who know everything already. That's what verse 1 is all about in Psalm 1. Blessed are you if you don't do these things. You will be wise. Verse 2. There's a wisdom that is found in delighting in the law of the Lord. There's wisdom to meditate on it both day and night. A phrase for always, for Scripture to always be present with you, for Scripture to be that important that you carry it with you in your day and at night. And we can do that. We can do it practically. We can read it. And then we can take it with us into our day. That's the practice of the wise. Because scripture can get us involved with God. It can get us involved with the purposes of God. It can get us to the point of following the ways of God. It can get us to the point where we take our crooked and bent and twisted life and put it up against the rule of life mentioned in Scripture and make us straight, uh, our paths straight. That's 
the gift of Scripture. That's the wisdom. And so Scripture becomes a reference for life. And the wise use Scripture as a reference of life. And so the reading and the meditation and the submitting to the good news of Scripture, it's that which develops goodness in our beings. Scripture will get us involved with God and get us involved in the purposes of God and get us to the point of following Him. Scripture will get us to that point where we become a Bible 2.0. We become walking Bibles we become a reference of the truths of God's kingdom for those who have not read Scripture. And so it's no good for us to read Scripture and to study Scripture, but to not follow the truths of Scripture. It's no good for us to be involved in the reading and the study of Scripture, but to continue to be involved in all sorts of shady business deals. It does us no good. We are foolish if we read Scripture and study Scripture but then go on to dictate who should and who shouldn't be part of society in whatever form. Who should be part of this organization and not part of that organization? Who should be present here and not present here? Uh, who qualifies uh, to be in church with you? and who should not be in church with you. It does no good for us to read and to study Scripture while we have our backs turned towards the marginalized and the oppressed and the poverty-stricken. It does us no good to study and to follow, uh, uh, to, to read and to study Scripture, but remain hell-bent on being a hell to live with. It's no good to read Scripture devoutly and then to treat those that we share this world with as commodities, as extensions of our personhood, uh, that they can run our little errands and do our little things and we will control them by remote. There's a deep inconsistency in our beings. When we read Scripture and listen to Scripture, and then go on to live a life that is counted to Scripture. And so the reading of the wise, the meditations of Scripture both day and by night, have a certain feel. It's always a reading of Scripture with a, an openness <coughs> or a submission to the purposes of God. It's a reading of Scripture and then saying, Lord, how do I obey you? How do I bring my life in alignment with your purposes as a result of this practice of obeying the law of the Lord and delighting in the law of the Lord? It's that kind of living that will result in life in all its fullness. And so to not live humbly in goodness, to not receive ongoing instruction from God for our formation and for our maturing, to say to the world, uh, my parents read me a scripture, took me to Sunday school, I'm now complete, I'm done, um, I know enough uh, for the rest of my life. Uh, to finish your studies uh, of scripture and to say it's done. Uh, or to have gone to uh, a minister better than me, uh, last sermon, and say, well, nothing can be added. Uh, to pursue a life 
that is lived with no reference to God. It has a consequence. And there is a foolishness to such living. That kind of living often causes us to try and look better than we actually are, uh, to look better than others, uh, to get the better of others. That living is often a life where things fall apart. Uh, it is a life that causes us to be uh, at each other's throats. It's competitive. It's divisive. It will work against relationship and community, both for which we were made. And so I love the image that is given to us in Psalm 1. It's the image of those who are wise or those who are blessed by God being like a tree that drinks from a spring. I have no doubt about just how desperate our world is for God's wisdom. Just imagine your home being a place where God's wisdom is present and active and encouraged and protected. All your places of work or your community or your church, imagine this nation being characterized by people who are able to cooperate and draw alongside other people rather than to separate and distance themselves uh, from others. That wise living is not easy. It will always require God's Spirit to dwell deeply in our beings so that we may consistently be governed by a spirit of gentleness, that we may consistently pour out mercy and blessing over others that we share this world with. But imagine our homes, imagine our places of work, our community, our church, our nation. Imagine all these places just being characterized by people who hold personal dignity and honor in high regard. Imagine those places being places that are committed to learn from God just how to live with others in a way that is respectful of personal freedom and responsibility. Imagine the healthy and the robust and the holy communities that result or that are caused by the wise. I think that there are people around us that are in desperate need of the trees that are spoken of in Psalm 1 of people who are deeply rooted, of people who are, are bearing fruit in season, of people who are able to give sanctuary and shelter to others, of people who are able to stand firm. And so may God continue to form and may God continue to mature us to be those kind of trees uh, for this world and to bring a godly wisdom into reality. Amen. We pray together. Father, we thank you for uh, your word. We thank you for its instruction. We thank you for your word shining a light onto the realities of our beings. And so, Father, for giving us direction and guidance into the ways of your wisdom, we give thanks. For reminding us of the fruitlessness of living in foolishness, we give thanks. 
And so, Father, we pray that we may cooperate with your Spirit in moving our existence from those places where foolishness dominates. May we move our lives from those places into the places where your wisdom bears its full fruit. We pray that it may be so in our homes, in our places of work, in our community. We pray that our very church may be a place which is known for its wisdom. Father, we pray that we may live in a nation that is characterized by wise choices, by wise living, by people who pursue goodness, the kind of goodness that is found uh, in people being aware that they need to be saved from lesser states. And so, Father, we thank you uh, for your spirit that is always there to guide, to reveal, uh, to sustain, and to inspire. Bless us and keep us, we pray. Amen. the Lord mighty God bless and keep you forever give you peace perfect peace strength for every endeavor lift your eyes to seek His face, face.